Welcome back, everyone, to the SSSF Range Time Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Davis. This is the podcast where we talk about youth shooting sports as it pertains to the Scholastic Action Shooting Program and the Scholastic Clay Target Program. And uh, last month, we had our national championships. What an event. You know, coming back from 2020, um, I, I think 2021 will forever be known as the, the bounce back year. Um, This event came roaring back with teams from 33 different states. Uh, We set all-time records for attendance uh, on both SCTP and the SASP. It was the largest national championships uh, for both programs. Um, And a new bar has been set, and the outlook of youth shooting sports, I'd say, is looking brighter than ever. Much like last year, we had uh, on the front end of nationals, we had international events of Bunker Trap International Skeet, as well as SASP's new disciplines of air pistol, air rifle, and sport pistol. It was really fun to see these international events on the front end, and then, you know, not more than a month later, uh, see the same events at the Olympics. And we're going to get into the Olympics later, because we actually have quite a few ties between alumnus um, current athletes and staff that represented uh, Team USA there. So back to nationals, I'm happy to report that uh, the SCTP had just over 2,700 athletes competing at their respective uh, clay target sports, and that was a, for a total of 7,658 event entries. Uh, again, these participation numbers clearly solidified 2021 as the largest SCTP national championship to date. Uh, to put this into perspective, over 1.4 million White Flyer clay targets, shout out to White Flyer for being the official clay target of the SCTP, um, 1.4 million of those were thrown at the national championship events with an additional 357,000 targets thrown during the sponsor demos, shoot-offs, last competitor standing, uh, practice, and, and various side games. That's somewhere around 10 semi-tractor loads stretching beyond the length of a football field if you line them front to back. On the pistol rifle side, SASP again set a new record for the largest action shooting event in the world. Um, I believe that's three years running now. And over 700 participants competed for um, really a staggering 2,000 uh, event entries there where well over 320,000 rounds were fired in competition and then an additional 180,000 rounds were fired during the sponsor side event matches, the demos, the practice base. And to accommodate, you know, this spike in participation, the Cardinal Shooting Center actually expanded the action shooting base from uh, eight bays to 12 bays uh, before the event took place. And one more record I got to talk about is after the final shots were fired at the 2021 National Championships, it not only set the program records, but also went down as the largest shoot in history of the Cardinal Shooting Center. It was just so good to see the the spectacle of nationals again with the state parades coming through with uh, the last competitor standing events. It was really just so great to see everyone at the Cardinal Shooting Center again. Some of our athletes actually participate in both programs. This is really an impressive display of, of shooting mastery uh, at a high level across multiple disciplines. The 2021 CZ USA Top Gun Challenge was determined through trap, skeet, swarming clays, iron sight pistol, whether it be rimfire or centerfire, your fastest rifle time, and 1911, uh, with those scores being compiled to calculate the winners. Everyone was thinking that there was going to be a three-peat from Jack Krasilak, but uh, it sounds like he had some, some gun malfunctions going on, so we have a new champion. Your 2021 Top Gun Challenge champion is Trace Scuderi, hopefully I butcher that name, of uh, the Young Guns of Quail Creek in Florida. He won a CZ USA Drake shotgun, a Mossberg 22 rifle, and a Browning Buckmark camper pistol. In second place is Bailey Luters of the Arnold Junior Shooters and the Brass Bandits uh, out of Missouri. She is the high-scoring female coming in second place for two consecutive years in the Top Gun Challenge, and she came away with a CZ-1012 shotgun. And in third place, Jack Krasilak, our 2019 and 2020 champion, um, also of the Young Guns of Quail Creek, he came away with a Glock 44. So congratulations to all our winners. Um, 
all the way down to sixth place, was awarded with uh, some prizes. And we hope to see even more of our athletes participating in the CZ Top Gun Challenge next year. And with the new season starting September 1st in just a couple of weeks, you might want to consider adding some additional disciplines to your repertoire. You could be the next CZ Top Gun Challenge champion. Okay, so as I said, Olympics. I hope you guys all watch the Olympics. There's some new sports that I was really impressed with. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but the the rock climbing events, holy cow, that was incredible. Um, we actually also had some new shooting events. For gold in 10-meter air rifle was William Shaner. This 20-year-old air rifle athlete from Colorado Springs set a new Olympic record in the finals with his 24 shots scoring a 251.6 to edge out China. It's within the range of possibilities that it could swap around here. It would take something extraordinary. We have seen it here before. Attempt two is more than good enough. It's an Olympic record. William Shayna takes the gold for the United States of America. This University of Kentucky student previously won gold at the 2021 ISSF World Cup in Croatia and as part of the men's air rifle team at the 2021 ISSF World Cup in New Delhi. On the shotgun side, we have Amber English securing gold in women's skeet. First Lieutenant Amber English of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit is also a Colorado Springs native. And SCTP program representatives uh, actually recall that First Lieutenant English attended early SCTP training camp events uh, early on in her career. In the women's ski final on July 26, she set a new Olympic record of 56 targets. Debut, one target away from gold in Tokyo in women's ski. And she got and it! Is. And she missed her last shot, but she didn't really need it. Amber English, the 31-year-old Colorado Springs native, in her Olympic debut, climbs to the top of the podium in Tokyo in women's skeet. She has won gold. And if anyone didn't know already, I'm happy to report that USA had a clean sweep of gold in the skeet events. Vincent Hancock set a new Olympic record of 59 targets, and he became the first Olympic athlete to have won three gold medals in skeet. A two-shot lead right now. And when you've only got six targets left, two shots means a lot. Two targets for his third gold in men's skeet. And there it is. Vinny Hancock. It will be a third gold. And he barely snuck into this final with that 122. And now he's walking away with gold. He knows it now. The 32-year-old native of Eatonton, Georgia, is back on top here in Tokyo. A record third Olympic gold in men's skeet. You know, Vincent is a, a poster child for the success uh, that you can achieve through the SCTP. Uh, he came up through the program. He attended the very first SCTP training camp. And actually came back a couple times, uh, made appearances at the SCTP National Championships to meet and um, and coach the, the next generation of youth athletes. Moving on to women's trap, Kaylee Browning came home with a silver medal, and she broke just one target less than the event leader from Slovakia. Browning needs to make this shot. She's already got the silver medal, but let's go out strong. Let's make this shot. This is an outstanding performance from this young woman. It's her Olympic debut. She went up against a very experienced shooter, and she ends strong. Now, there's some SCTP ties there as well uh, in response to the international events being held on the front end of nationals now. Uh, Kaylee attended uh, last year's 2020 event uh, to provide coaching for youth athletes that focused on bunker trap. If you want to hear more about her experience uh, at SCTP Nationals, you can listen to her podcast, Beyond the Podium, and there's an episode specifically titled SCTP Nationals. Next up is Mixed Team Trap, where USA secured the bronze medal with SCTP alumnus Maddie Berneau. She began her path to becoming an Olympian when she joined the Waterford Wolverine shooting team, participating in the SCTP. 
In 2014, Maddie attended the SETP development camp as a team member on the SETP international team. That camp was designed to introduce young SCTP athletes to the Olympic disciplines of shotgun sports by subject matter experts, including the team coach, our very own Olympic trap shooting medalist, Terry DeWitt. Malin's mixed team bronze medal came after a heartbreaking qualification round in women's trap, missing the cutoff by one target behind her USA teammate, Kaylee Browning. But she came back in the mixed team event. She was one of only two shooters to break all 75 targets. Alongside her Team USA event teammate, Brian Burrows, a shoot-off against Slovakia came down to a drop target, and that opened up the opportunity for Maddie. Oh, there it is again. Same shot that she missed right at the end of normal time, and she's inconsolable, isn't she? Well, it's not all over, but what we can say is the 23-year-old Madeline Burnout can take the bronze medal for the United States with this shot. Gets it. She does. And all of a sudden, the smile comes out. (laughs) The team of Mary Tucker and Lucas Kaczynski placed six in the respective 10-meter air rifle events and then competed in the mixed team event on July 27th. Uh, Both of the U.S. mixed teams made it to the second stage of qualification, where Mary and Lucas went on to the final with a score of 418, outshooting the ROC for silver. And the SASP has a lot to cheer about. Their very own Director of Development for International Disciplines, Mr. James Hall, represented Team USA in the 10-meter air pistol and mixed team events. James' journey to the Olympic stage began at Jacksonville State University, where he was a four-time All-American team captain, and USA National Rifle Team member. He actually secured the first USA quota spot in air pistol for the Olympics in Tokyo with his gold medal at the 2018 Championship of the Americas. When it came down to it in Tokyo, James was just one point from making the 10-meter air pistol final. Uh, He actually shot more X's than all but two athletes in the qualifier. James went on to place 10th in the mixed team event alongside his teammate Sandra Uptegraft. We're so proud of what James did over in Tokyo, representing the USA and SASP. Uh, And as the official youth feeder program for USA shooting, James has quickly established and and continues to expand the SASP's new international disciplines of 10-meter air rifle, 10-meter air pistol, and sport pistol. And we also had a couple of current athletes over in Tokyo. The brothers Jackson Leverett and Henry Leverett competed in the men's 25-meter rapid-fire pistol event. The Leverett brothers are both sophomores of the Ohio State University pistol team, and prior to joining the team at Ohio, the Leverett's had set four USA shooting national records in junior men's rapid-fire and junior men's sport pistol. As current SASP athletes, both Jackson and Henry are SSSF College All-Americans, having secured their spots on the first teams for international air, sport, and standard pistol. In Tokyo, Henry and Jackson placed 22nd and 25th in the second qualification stage, respectfully. And speaking of All-Americans, the National Skeet Shooting Association and the National Sporting Clays Association both published their SCTP All-American teams for 2021. So if you head over to their respective websites, you can see which SCTP members came out on top in those respective shoots. Uh, And I want to give you a little behind-the-scenes news. Um, As most of you know, the new season starts September 1st, but registration is already open uh, for coaches. And for the first time ever, I'm sure many, many people will be very happy to hear. We have all of our forms online through DocuSign. No need to physically sign paperwork and send it in. So we're real happy about rolling that out. And sounds like we've got a ton of great feedback on that already. I'm sitting here with Mr. Randy Morris. Randy, you recently attended the SASP Nationals as a safety officer for us, uh, a volunteer. And rather than coming in as maybe a previous volunteer or a an actual coach in the program, you came pretty much sight unseen, um, responded to our invite. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us how you are involved with the shooting sports and, and how you got involved uh, with SASP for nationals this year. Okay. Well, um, I, I, I started shooting in, in organized shooting sports a, a long time ago, back in the seventies. Uh, I was a bullseye shooter and then life got in the way and kind of got, you know, uh, away from it for a while. But here recently in the last few years, I've gotten involved with, 
um, the Glock, Scoot, uh, Glock Shooting Sport Foundation and IDPA and things like that and started shooting again and really started enjoying it. Um, a friend of mine suggest, that I was shooting IDPA with suggested I look into Steel Challenge, and I did, and I fell in love with it instantly. And some of the things I liked about, really liked about Steel Challenge is it was, it's consistent, um, the same kind of targets. And you have that with SASP too. You're, you're shooting the same target arrays all the time. So you can keep track of how you're doing and shoot basically against yourself and, and maybe not one. The other thing I really enjoyed about Steel Challenge and, and was how much uh, involvement there is with youth shooters, younger shooters. And it was just great to, uh, run into, uh, these, uh, kids that were, you know, fairly new at shooting anything and were all really pretty good <laughs> in many cases, better than, than most of my contemporaries. So, um, that just, I, I, at that point, I, became aware of SASP because of some of the youth shooters I ran across and, and, and knew and talked to and talked to their parents and found out that it, that existed. But I really didn't have any, um, any other contact with SASP in that time frame. Um, there were no local teams uh, that I knew about at, or anything that I ran across in, you know, through the normal course of, of going to different ranges around um, Indiana that I shoot at and I just didn't cross, I didn't knowingly cross paths with SASP. Um, from there, um, I guess I have to, bring, I have to blame, um, the people at Camden Cross, Brian and Jake, Brian and Jake set out a, a, an email blast. Probably, I think it was sometime early June, um, talking about, the nationals and their sponsorship in the nationals and, and mentioning that, you know, there was a need for volunteer safety officers. Um, and that kind of intrigued me. Um, I'm retired now, so I have plenty of time and I you know, talked to my wife. I said, what do you think? I was like, go over, you know, the nationals is only three hours away from here. I could go over for a couple of days and, and, and work as a safety officer. And, you know, I informally have worked as, a, as, a, as an RO in Steel Challenge. Um, and I am credentialed as an NRA um, range safety officer. So I went into the website and looked at the sign up. There were some people signed up and I looked at how it was set up and I went, OK, well, I can do I can go over there. I can drive over like on Sunday afternoon and and. and do some sessions on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I signed up for that, and uh, I just went. Well, you, thank you so much for answering the call. You know, uh, Tandem Cross, yes, they they are platinum sponsors of this classic action shooting program. Um, they were there in attendance, and as far as I know, they actually sold out on the very first day of, of Nationals. Um, I can't remember which one, if it was Brian or whoever came in the first day, they called the other one and said, Hey, I need more product whenever you come in. So fill up the van, drive over here. And throughout the week, they just completely sold out of parts. So it's, it's really a great program, uh, on the philanthropic level to get involved with you shooting sports, but also very advantageous because these are athletes and families that are using these products. Yeah. One of the, one of the, when I arrived Sunday afternoon, I drove from Indiana over to uh, the Cardinal Center and I followed the storm that was going through on Sunday afternoon. And I never was in the storm while I was driving, but I guess uh, when I got, you know, as a result of what I saw when I got there, I mean, the place was flooded. And that <laughs> was like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> um, but one, it's really, it was really kind of funny that one of the, one of the first people I ran into was a, a, a young shooter and her dad that had just been to um, Indiana um, a couple weeks prior to that for the Area 5 Steel Challenge. And these were the first people I ran. I had met them at Area 5. I had uh, kind of seen them and, you know, 
you meet people online on Facebook and stuff like that. But this is the first time I met them in person was uh, at the Area 5 match. And they were the first people I ran into when I got to the, um, the range there at the Cardinal Center, which is kind of nice. And a um, young lady, uh, her name is Kaylee. Um, she's a tandem cross sponsored shooter too. So, um, I watched her shoot on Sunday for a little bit and, and hung out with her dad and kind of got the feel of the place. And then Monday morning, uh, showed up at eight o'clock and Kelvin put me to work. <laughs> yeah. He will put you to work, especially at nationals. Um, what was your experience as far as being now you're already certified RO in steel challenge. What was the difference as far as Kelvin onboarding you into a safety officer for SASP Monday morning? Um, it was, it was very similar. Um, I had pulled up the range commands and stuff like that, uh, from the, from the handbook online. And I went through it before I got there. So I was not going in completely blind, but it was really, you know, really good um, safety talk that he gives before each session with all the RSOs. And um, it was, it was good just to, you know, put it to practice. Um, what I, what I was really impressed with um, as far as actually putting it into, into play was how well coached so many of these kids are. Uh, the teams, the teams I got to personally, you know, contact and, and run through um, were very safety conscious, very aware of, of everything and, and careful and, and uh, you know, and, and what they did. And I, it didn't require a whole lot of, you know, other than just me paying attention and giving them the commands. They knew what to do, which was really impressive to me. Yeah. You know, that's a, a great, um, point of view, uh, coming from the outside, not, uh, directly, um, being in contact with SASP teams. what do you think about the team based, um, aspect of the SASP that it provides versus, you know, seal challenge where it's strictly an individual sport? Yeah. I love all oh, the team, the, the team based, uh, setup is, is really outstanding. It, 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 I could see that it drew all of the all of the athletes, all the supporters in on paying attention to what everybody else was doing and how and you know and and encouraging them and and so on and so on. I had one team that after every shooter, after every person shot, they applauded, <laughs> and it, it kind of, at first it kind of just stunned me, but they were just you know, and they were you know, and if somebody did really good, I had a that same team, I had two or three athletes come through and shoot completely clean runs, you know, five for five, all, you know, all the way through. And they were, you know, each, with each one that did that, they, you know, they were just, the kids were just, the other kids were just going nuts and saying, you know, cheering them and so on. It was just really great. You should have seen but, the award ceremony. Um, one team in particular from Texas, uh, I believe it's the South Texas shooters. They, the completely erupted with applause, um, in the award ceremony, uh, banquet hall, whenever any kid from the team, uh, got called up is just the, the, the team support the family, not only through SASP in general, but, uh, at the team level is just outstanding in the program. Yeah, that was I'm, so thrilled to that was uh, uh, really good. Um, I got to rewarding. I got to meet in person one of my one of my personal idols, <laughs> and and I got to see another one. I didn't get to I didn't get to meet him, but I got to see him briefly. Uh, I got to see <laughs> JJ Ricasa uh, briefly. I, I was watched him. I was busy with a team about the same time, but I finished up just in time to catch him shooting. Um, a stage against one of the other uh, young athletes. And that was pretty neat. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, we had both, well, I think you're about to say it, but I'll go ahead and say it for you. We had um, Shane Coley of team Glock and JJ Ricaza of uh, team Beretta come in to give uh, basically shooting clinics um, for anyone who was, had free time uh, that, you know, they weren't actually on the stage of shooting at the time. Um, 
so they they took these these kids in these families these athletes uh parents even and kind of ran through both mental management um match management as well as some shooting skills and then after they're done with those those shooting clinics they would actually go over to the SASP stages and shoot with the athletes um, the ones that were in attendance of the the clinics, we kind of did a random draw, and you know that athlete got to shoot with or against um, you know the this pro, um, and it was really a great time uh, for all. Yeah, I, I I got to talk I got to talk to some of the kids that were at the uh, at the class, and um, they were kind of easy to spot in in many cases because they had gotten JJ's autograph on their shooting shirt <laughs> or hat or something. <laughs> I've seen JJ Mikasa autographs all over the place. It was pretty cool. Um, the, the other, the other individual that I saw was kind of a mystery guest. I don't know if he knew he was there, but he was there as a coach. Um, one of the teams came up and I was, uh, introducing myself to the coaches and, this young, younger coach comes running up. He goes, I want to keep score. He says, you won't be able to keep track of how we got this all squatted. I said, be my guest. And then I'm lo- and I'm looking at him for a second. I go, you look really familiar. And then I went, oh, holy cow, it's Kobe Pavlock. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kobe yeah. was Kobe there. Was as there. A, yep. He was coaching one of the teams, the team actually from Carrollton, Iowa, not the, not the main Volkortsen team. Um, but another team and it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> and I went, Oh my God, it's, it's Colby. I said, you're Colby. And he goes, hi. <laughs> and he goes, you're not used to seeing me when I'm not shooting. I guess I said, Nope, <laughs> but it's good That's to so see cool. you here. And he was yeah. so helpful and he was, and he was so, and he was so good with the kids. It was amazing. It was great. And he, I mean, I don't, I don't know him personally, but he's not that old, not that much older than they are. No, he's so, in, he's so. like early twenties, very early twenties. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just out of college, I believe. Yeah. And you know, back to talking about how fast these kids are, you know, at the world speed shooting championships, uh, you know, a lot of those world records were, were set by SASP athletes, these juniors. Right. So it's yeah. incredible to see. Yeah. And I, I, you know, it's, it's funny because I, over over the course of, of a couple different couple years, I haven't been in Steel Challenge that long, but over the course of a couple years of some some state state matches here and a couple other states and area matches I've gone to, you know, I, I've run into these kids, see them shoot, and then see how they do at Worlds, and then you know, and then these same kids were were coming through and shooting at the SASP Nationals. I went, oh, so they're they're covering it from from both ends and just right it's good to see that kind of participation on absolutely. both on both in both sports yeah absolutely this is a great um introduction to shooting sports and you can probably attest to this even steel challenge is a very it's like the gateway sport to shooting sports because it's it's very easy to understand you know as yep. you said it's the same stages over and over again and yep. the mechanics of how to shoot the match is not confusing. It's it's not difficult to understand. Yeah. I also got I also got to be a little bit humbled. I um, I participated in one of the adult shoots you had, um, and got to find out personally that it's just as hard, or <laughs> <laughs> that you can get messed up just as easily in steel cha- in this as you can in steel challenge. Uh, you try to especially if you hard. go ch- especially if you go chasing some of the scores that these kids are putting down well yeah and i got i, I didn't i didn't know it at the time when i got squatted in the, in the adult shoot with a young lady um her first name is tegan and i guess she um uh, and she is just in a she i guess just out of sasp and i guess she was a several time champion um, she put, she put the hurt, she put the hurting on all of us, all the guys that shot. <laughs> yeah. Her and, um, her, her and Annie Unsel. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and I shot in the same squad with, I didn't know who she was or anything. I shot in the same squad with her and her father 
and we I grew up in Wisconsin. They're from Wisconsin, so we had a good old time. And she just thumped me, and I was like, "Oh wow, she's really good at this." And then I looked, you know, looked at some things later on, looked her up online, and I went, "Oh, she's a multi-time SASP champion." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, she's done this a few times. Well, speaking of doing this a few times, um, the reason why I interviewed you is you actually sent a comment uh, on one of the Facebook posts on SASP, and you said you spent three days on the range with some of the best young shooters and their families uh, that you had ever had the privilege to meeting. Um, and next year, uh, it sounded like you're going to come back and, and do some more safety officer uh, work with us. That's the plan. Um, okay. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, God willing, um, I will uh, be there next year, probably for more than three days. I'll expand it out a little bit. Um, I've got the, I've got the time. Hopefully, I'll have the money to do it, and and uh, just come over and, and do it because I really enjoy it. when I had to leave, or when I you know was finally leaving. It was just like, oh, huh, I'd like to stay a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> I well, also again, thank you. Oh, go ahead. I also I also got to recruit uh, uh, another steel challenge shooter. I um, I ran across there was there's a, a steel challenge shooter from Ohio. He, in fact, he lives like 15 minutes from the Cardinal Center. He didn't know anything about SASP, but he came to shoot the adult shoot. How oh, he did cool. that, I, I you know how that ca- connection happened. But I ran into him at the adult shoot, and I go. I didn't know you were involved in SASP and he goes, I'm not. I said, well, I said, Dan, you're, you're an RO, you know, why don't, they, they need some ROs. If you got time, you know, you could volunteer, come out and do this. That's what I'm here for. And he goes, I think I'll do that. And I, so I introduced him to Kelvin and, um, uh, I guess he came out, uh, he took the days off from work on Thursday and Friday and came out and ro you know, sometimes it, it feels like the world is, you know, it's a big place, but the shooting sports community is, it very, it humbles you and then makes you think that, uh, maybe the world's not so big. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. It was, uh, it was an amazing experience and, um, I hope to do more when I got, and it was great. I got to, I got to meet Brian from Tandem Cross after having, phone com- phone and email conversations with him and his wife uh, over the past couple of years. I finally got to meet him and I got to meet some of your other uh, sponsors that were there that I, you know, uh, came into contact with. And that was really great too. It was, it's, it was good seeing their, you know, not only their support financially and everything else, but their personal time that they spent there was, right. was great. That was, that, that impressed me. Yeah, because usually sponsors of of shooting sports, you know, they're sending some banners and maybe some product, but that's it. <laughs> Whereas at SASP, you know, Tandem Cross was literally there. Um, usually, Brian Conley from Hunters HD Gold is usually there. Um, and yeah, it, you know, this community is fantastic for everyone coming together and supporting these youth shooters. Yeah, it was it was pretty impressive that. The whole setup there, the Cardinal Center is pretty amazing, and and uh, I spent the bulk of the time with SASP. But when I drove through that whole setup for the clay target shooters, my goodness, are they involved? <laughs> and are there a bunch of them? <laughs> oh yeah, SASP. I don't know if you know this, but every year it sets the world record for the largest action shooting sports event. Um, so we broke records again this year. And then on the shotgun side, they also had their largest nationals ever as far as participation goes. And uh, when all, all was said and done, it was actually the largest shoot the Cardinal Center has ever uh, hosted. So incredible bounce back year from, you know, 2020 was, was a bit of an abbreviated uh, season for many of these athletes on both programs. Yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of rough on, uh, all the shooting sports, but I think, uh, and we're, you know, we're going through still tough times with, with attendance and stuff like that, but it was great. You know, so it was great to see that many people be able to come out and shoot and have ammo and have fun and learn. And 
everything. It was great. Yeah. Even some of these families, it's, um, it's part of their summer vacation. You know, they'll, they'll go travel. Yeah. yeah I could tell that. I could tell it. all the campers and everything. Yep. Yep. <laughs> camp for the week. Well, Randy, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support of the program. Um, we're so happy that you were able to come come by nationals and and help out these athletes. Um, you know, it was a record breaking year, so we definitely needed the extra help. Uh, and and you came right in the time that we needed you. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you to Tandem Cross for making that connection. Uh, and we really hope to see you next year at nationals. And thank you so much for uh, hopping on this call. Well, with me. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a couple other uh, of my buddies that um, can RO or want to RO and, and get them to come over too. I think uh, we're close enough here, you know, that it's 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 not a it's not too you know too hard to get there. Yeah, three hours um, sounds it's reasonable. like a th- three hour drive for me for and some of uh, some of my friends are over in Terre Haute, so that adds another hour to it. But it's not that big a deal. Well, that's, that's incredible. Thank you so much. You know, it just goes to show that the the shooting sports community is a tight knit community and especially when uh, supporting these youth athletes. So thank you so much again, Mr. Morris. You're welcome. My pleasure. All righty. Well, you have a good one and uh, thank you so much for hopping uh, on the podcast with me. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. In that interview, we mentioned Tandem Cross, who is a sponsor of the SASP. Tandem Cross has hot new products and deals to make your good guns great. Based in New Hampshire and proudly made in the USA, Tandem Cross is the market leader in competition-ready aftermarket parts and accessories for rimfire firearms, triggers, extended magazine releases, internal components, and more. Find what you need at Tandem Cross today. Be sure to visit their website at www.tandemcross.com. That's T A N D E M K. R-O-S-S, tandemcross.com, and follow them on social media. Tandem Cross, making good guns great. We're going to do a quick sponsor roundup before I send you guys off. This one is for Winchester on both programs. Uh, Winchester has announced its extension through 2024 as the official ammunition of the SCTP. Matt Campbell, Vice President of Sales Marketing for Winchester Ammunition, says... Winchester continues to demonstrate industry leadership with its commitment to the growth of shooting sports and organizations like SETP. The SETP leadership, coaches, and young athletes drive excitement into the shooting sports. It's a model we are proud to support. So, you know, not only are they a program sponsor, they also help out the SETP international team, which is comprised of the top 15 SETP youth shooters across the country in the international disciplines. And those are determined by the finals events uh, during nationals uh, in the bunker trap and international skeet competitions. Uh, Really cool shoot-offs to watch. So congratulations to our new team that has been seeded. I think we'll have more news on that very soon. And thank you so much for Winchester uh, in supporting the entire program as well as that SETB international team. And accompanying that announcement... Winchester has also continued the sponsorship of SASP at the silver sponsor level for the next three years. So thank you to Winchester for supporting the entire umbrella of youth shooting sports under the SSSF. We are so thrilled and thankful and humbled by your support for years to come. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this month. Next time I chat with you, the season will officially started. We are so excited to get the 2021-2022 season up and running. We'll see you next time.